Spring comes swiftly here. One day it's snowing and the next the south winds are blowing and babies are being born. And I'm doing my best to keep up and slow down, to create and to savor. Spring pulls me in so many different directions all at once. The dormancy of winter bursts into a bonanza of to-do lists and gatherings, abundance and wild things taking their first breath. It's all I can do sometimes just to take a moment before the energy of spring takes over, just to spend time with the seedlings, to drink the plants, and to behold just this beautiful season all around us. The plants remind us that there is time. Even just for a moment, time is subjective. A minute can last an eternity with the perfect plant, the perfect moment, the perfect person. There is time if you look for it. That's what spring teaches me. So the other day I was sitting underneath this pine tree here, scotch pine, and I heard all of these little popping noises coming from the tree. So I thought there was maybe a bird or a squirrel in the tree. And I was looking and looking, I couldn't see anything until I realized it was actually the tree making these popping noises. Because during the spring, when pine trees release their pollen, the cones make these popping noises. And it was just such a, I don't know, exciting experience to actually hear, you know, this process taking place, but also to hear the language of the trees, you know, Trees really do have their own language, their own essence, just as much as plants do. And it's not even on this sort of energetic vibrational level, which, you know, that happens as well. But it's really on this physical level. You can hear the language with your you know, bare ears. You know, you can see it with your eyes when you, you know, look up at the trees and they're swaying and the leaves are chattering and all of those wonderful things. And so, um, unfortunately, that's just really something you can't hear in the city when there's all this noise around so you really need to just escape to these quiet wild places to hear the language of the trees and it really made me think of our ancestors and how obvious it must have been to them that plants can speak that trees can speak um, you know there's that old adage knock on wood and of course now it means you know good luck it's sort of a su superstitious thing but uh, way back in the day it actually was used by priests or priestesses when they knocked on the trees to call forth the spirit of the tree. And so that's really lasted for millennia, even though the meaning has changed a bit, that language and the spirit of the plants is still here. And so that was a really wonderful, exciting uh, sort of gateway into spring for me. You know, usually it happens around 70 degrees, so it's finally getting warmer here. So I just wanted to share today some of the different sort of spring tasks we do here in the garden because things are different here in the forest when you, you know, plant and work in the forest because if you fight against a lot of the things um, that comes with living in the forest, it can make your life a lot harder or a lot easier. And so that's kind of what I wanted to share today. The spring garden always starts with a fire. This is sort of a ritual tradition, but also a practical one. It burns away all of the leaf litter and all of the pests that may have come about in the garden before, but it also represents just a cleansing energy, something new that's about to begin. And then begins the raking and the cleaning and the raking and the raking and the raking. We've already raked probably five times this year. But here we go again. This is one of the parts of living in the forest that is so unique. The leaves never stop. And so we burn a lot of our leaves, but we also use a lot of them 
for the beds just as sort of a mulch. Instead of having to buy straw or anything like that, we can use our leaves. And we also found a sock, which is really funny, <laughs> in one of the beds. And then sometimes the rain comes, reminding us that it is indeed spring, which gives us a nice break at times just to admire the season. I love rainstorms. It feels like we're protected under this porch in the house just to relax and enjoy each other and spend time slowing down. Sometimes we need that reminder to slow down, and I think rain is a wonderful reminder that there is time, and then there is time to go back out and enjoy the sun. I love the dichotomy. I love the contrast. And with all contrasts, the spring garden is no different. You know, it's very difficult sometimes to witness all of the life and the abundance here, but also sometimes the death that comes along with it. Our garden is a host to so many wonderful animals, including these little bunnies, which as you can see, I had no problem feeding. Um, but also we have salamanders and snakes and, you know, all sorts of other animals as well. So yeah, we've already been doing some raking for the millionth time uh, throughout the year and um, living in the forest, the raking is never done. So just general cleanup, we cleaned out our fire pit and burned a bunch of those leaves um, and stalks from last year. And unfortunately we can't just, you know, make those into leaf mold or anything like that because we do have ticks here. And so they like to hide in those leaf piles, so we have to burn all of our leaf piles, unfortunately. Otherwise, that would have made a great leaf mulch or, you know, wildlife habitat and whatnot. But unfortunately here, we have to burn them. But next, um, as you can see, we have these wattle beds here. And this is just a really old technique from um, Europe where they would literally use willow branches, birch branches to make these raised beds and so that's what I've been using for all of my beds and it's just such a amazing way to make these garden beds because they don't require any fasteners or anything like that no screws nothing all you need is some sticks and a nice mallet to pound them into the ground um, and it's just really easy and really therapeutic really to sort of just partake in that ancient ritual and you know really be a part of you know something just really old and something really simple and of course the only downside to doing these sort of wattle woven beds is that they do need to be upkept as you can see we're um, sort of missing a little segment here and so we need to sort of maintain them a little bit more than we would treated wood and so this year we will definitely be replacing some of these little posts here and add some more weaving um, strands as well. And so that will really help renew it. And of course, just to give you some context, these beds were made about three or four years ago, and this is the first time we've had to do any sort of maintenance. So even though they do require some maintenance, it's really not all that much. And like I said, it's a really th therapeutic sort of thing to do. And then after that, we'll actually get into the beds and start taking care of these beds, but that'll be for another week. But I did just want to show you my little mini woodland garden here because it's really just starting to bloom 
and gets so beautiful. Um, the snowdrops and the crocuses just stopped blooming, but we have these little star flowers, as you can see, sort of all throughout the garden, and the daffodils have just come up. And so this is like one of my favorite little spots. And we just got this wind chime, which I'm absolutely obsessed with. And so we'll be putting in some actual flagstones along here so there's an actual path to walk on. But yeah, I just, I love spring. There's no mosquitoes, it's not too hot. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and work on these beds today, replace some fence posts as well. And yeah, just enjoy the day. Come on in. Another huge part of getting the garden ready for spring is compost. So much beautiful compost and more raking, of course, more raking. But compost is huge. It helps to feed the garden. It's one of the most important amendments that we add. It really is black gold. And so here also I finally removed all of these blackberry brambles from the garden uh, because they are just taking over. We have some wonderful elderberry plants in the corner of the garden over here and the blackberries just totally crowded out and these um, blackberry vines they don't really even produce fruit for some reason so unfortunately I just had to pull them out and luckily here we have so many wild blackberries that um, you know, it's not really something I'm concerning myself with too much, but yeah, these guys are prickly and it was not a fun job that I was looking forward to, but here now finally the plants, this corner of the garden, which has always been really shaded, has some room to breathe. So that was a big task as well. And of course, there is so much more to do in the garden before we plant, but for now, this is enough. <laughs> 